Mendel Palace. It was the first game ever designed by Satoshi Tajiri, a name you might not immediately recognize, but unless you've been living under a rock, in a cave, on Mars, I guarantee you've at least heard of his work. See, he would go on to make this little obscure thing called Pokemon. I think it sold maybe one or two copies. Actually, last time I checked, it was considered Japan's biggest export. But the point is, this was the Pokemon guy's very first game. So if nothing else, this game is pretty historically significant. The story itself varies a little bit depending on which version you're playing. In the Japanese version, Quinty, your sister is jealous of your girlfriend, so she kidnaps her and takes her to a land of living dolls. And you have to go rescue her. In the North American version, you're some guy rescuing a princess from the land of living dolls. So, by the end of it, the Japanese version is at least a little bit more plot-filled, but the basic premise is the same either way. The story itself is a fairly basic tale of just rescue the girl. In fact, I'm much more interested in talking about the actual background development story than the actual story within the game. Tajiri himself was a big fan of arcade games at the time, going so far as to handwriting a magazine based on his passion for the arcade. When designing this game, Tajiri noted the rising popularity of side-scrolling games, thanks to Super Mario Bros. So he made the conscious decision to go against the grain and make the game take place on a fixed, singular screen. He also went back to his love of arcade games, looking back on old Namco games, he noted that the mechanics of those games tended to focus on a singular verb, like in Dig Dug, Dig. And he took this design philosophy to heart when designing this game. So when he made this game, he wanted to center the entire gameplay focus on a singular verb. His verb of choice? Flipping. And because of this, this game is about flipping cards. But this ain't no candy-ass digital trading card game. No, no. This is a badass puzzle action arcade game. Essentially, you are dropped into a world map where you can select one of eight separate castles, each one having ten levels. Once you beat those eight, you get two more to unlock. And essentially, once you pick your castle, you are dropped onto a 5x7 board covered in cards. Your mission? Flip the cards to send the enemies hurtling into the walls. This will kill them and allow you to progress to the next level. Your ability to flip cards is not the only weapon in your arsenal. Each card is piled up to seven times, and there are special attack cards, such as cards that will flip every card in a straight line, ones that will flip cards in a straight line to the walls in a cross pattern, as well as suns, which will flip all the cards, period. There are also bumper panels that, if you can run into them, will send you flying in one direction, and if I've got any footage of those, you're probably not going to be all that impressed because I can't use those to save my life. There's also roulette panels, which can give you anything from 100 points to an extra life, as well as hidden bonus panels, which will skip the stage and send you to a bonus stage. Your opposition is largely based on which castle you pick. Essentially, each castle has one enemy, sort of. Once you get to the halfway point of each castle, you will meet a second variation of this enemy, which has a few extra tricks up its sleeve and tends to be a little bit faster. But by the time you've run into them, you already understand their basic principles, having played at least five levels with the standard version, to sort of get a feel for them. So you should be able to handle slightly faster versions. Now this isn't immediately apparent, but this game actually runs on a time limit. If you take too long on any single level, the enemies themselves turn into zombies, and then they kind of start cheating. For example, the dancing ballerina enemies, which are basically designed to ricochet off walls in a straight line like a pinball, well, they start turning. So, essentially, they become much, much harder to dodge, as well as get a lot faster. The swimming dolls decide to hop out of the water and just start chasing you. Basically, once they become zombies, they kind of start filling in every single strategic weakness they have, making this game much, much harder. Which is why you kind of have to solve the puzzle of the exact specific way you need to take out your opponent, all before they go crazy and basically murder the hell out of you. And that's kind of what makes this game such a high-speed arcade action game. I mean, yeah, it's still a puzzle game, trying to figure out the best strategy to dispose of your foes, and try and figure out where the beneficial attack cards are, but it also becomes a very quick execution challenge, because once you have your strategy in place, you have to execute it before your enemies evolve past your strategy. And that's what makes this game challenging. 
is that each castle's enemies are different, and they evolve past the immediate strategy you may have come up for dealing with them. There's ten different types of enemies, from basic guys that jump, to enemies that flip panels and are hard to throw against walls, to characters that mimic your movement, to these bastard artists that sit there and make more enemies. Seriously, those guys are awful, and a new strategy must be developed for every enemy you encounter. And it's the requirement of a constantly evolving strategy that helps make this game such an engaging puzzle game. The presentation itself is fairly decent. You can tell exactly what each character will do at a glance because they all look so different, which speaks volumes about the character design. And the environments are a little bit bland, but that said, they're also trying to convey that they are cards on a table, so you kind of have to understand that there's a little bit of monotony that must be employed to keep a centralized aesthetic. Audio-wise, the soundtrack is kind of a mixed bag. The soundtrack itself is good, but not remotely memorable. I will say, however, that I do like the way the soundtrack is employed. It sort of has a Super Mario World feel to it, and I've mentioned this in a few other reviews at this point, but the game itself takes one singular melody that overarches the entire game, and for every enemy you run into, they rewrite the melody slightly so that it feels like each character has its own unique song, despite them all having one singular theme that makes the entire world feel like this giant living entity. And I'm not gonna lie, I love that. That's a good way to make a soundtrack in my opinion. In the end, Mendel Palace is not the most well-known game, but it is an excellent puzzle arcade game. Near as I can tell, not too many people actually know about this game. Most people don't even know that there's like five other games Tajiri made before Pokemon. But, I mean, let's be honest, Pokemon is the one everyone remembers. Because, you know, again, Japan's biggest export, and it's still a thing today. That said, you should not ignore Mendel Palace, it was an excellent game, and it's not wildly expensive. I spent like $30 on my copy, and I'm sure I overpaid for it, because I had to buy it at the one local place in town, which charges way too much on everything. But I think it was worth it just for the historical significance of this game. 